Hello and welcome back. This is Karen Keener of thesovereignmom.com. What a day. <laughs> it's been it's been quite the emotional roller coaster for us here. We um live in a semi-rural neighborhood and um so some of the people have ducks, some people have chickens, some people have horses, and some people just have regular backyards and gardens and that kind of stuff. We have chickens and our neighbor is, I think she's preparing her house to move. We haven't talked in a very long time. She's um, in a different place about COVID, ironically. <laughs> mm. The fact that she's getting ready to move makes me very happy, but she hired some gardeners to come over and take care of her yard and a week ago or so. He, um, a week ago or so, he had to, um, blah, 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 blah. her gardener came by with the dog, with his dog, and the dog started to go into our backyard. And my husband ran out the back door and just started like banging on shit to scare the dog away and yelling at it. And the guys like looked up, you know, from his gardening. And I said, we have chickens. You cannot let your dog come over here. Da, 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 da. And then I guess he did not get the message because today he let his dog out and he caught his dog in our yard. My kids didn't, but my kids came out and looked in the yard and said, where are the chickens? We can't find the chickens anywhere. We're looking everywhere and we don't see them. And so I said, I'll just go out there, not knowing any of this shit had gone down with the neighbor's dog or with the gardener's dog. But I go outside and the guy's coming up to the front yard and I said, and I'm like, I don't see the chickens anywhere. What the hell, you know? And they roam in our backyard and he's coming up our driveway towards my backyard, which I have pretty much blocked off with like trash cans and I have chairs just so the chickens won't get out and get into our neighbor's yard. To be polite neighbors, I don't want my chickens roaming into their yard, crapping on their sidewalk or whatever, you know, that keeps our houses separate. And we live on a dead end street. It's very quiet here, very quiet. So then to find like my chickens had been attacked, one of them, she's not doing so good. She doesn't show any external signs except for that there's feathers missing. There's no blood or direct injuries, but when I can hold her, I can feel that her neck doesn't feel right and her neck's kind of like whatever. So it might've broken the neck on the inside and we're just gonna have to wait and see. She did lay an egg today. They, Laid their eggs as usual today. I don't know if they will for the next few days because of the shock of everything. I found one, like I climbed back over this wood pile. I've never climbed on this wood pile since we've lived here because it's just so dangerous. But I found one of the chickens like buried herself underneath it. And so I had to dig her out of this. It's just like old scraps and stuff. Anyway, crazy thing. I told the guy, I was like, look, you've been warned. Your dog could get hit by a UPS truck or an Amazon truck or anything. So this is a very irresponsible way to keep your dog. When you come over here to garden, your dog needs to be in your truck or on a leash or something. So it cannot get out. I don't think that my neighbor knew that he was bringing his dog to roam around the neighborhood. Um, I don't see any point in talking to her about it because she's obviously not, I don't know, she's not on the same page with us. And, you know, we haven't t spoken since, you know, she had words with me about COVID stuff. And uh, so at any rate, um, next week I will be on the lookout for the guy. And if I see that dog walking down the street, I will call animal control or handle it some other way. Um, <laughs> I'll be standing out there with my Louisville slugger taking batting practice or something. Um, to protect my chickens from his dog. Um, but it's not going to happen again. I will definitely call animal control or I will bring the dog inside my house so it can't get my chickens and he can look around for his dog the way I looked around my chickens for, for my chickens for an hour today. Nonetheless, I ended up with all the adrenaline and the children crying over the chickens looking so bad and horrible and it just being such a terrifying event. 
<sighs> that I ended up just like, I was sitting here, like I was out there with the chickens for most of the day in the sun and I'm very sun sensitive. And then I, all of a sudden it hit me and I was like, I have got to lay down. Which brings me to the point today. I wanted to talk about listening to your body cues and how that's a big part of making boundaries and dealing with certain situations. Um, our body is so wise and it knows so much about who we are, what we want in our lives, what we don't want, what we don't need, what we should eat, what we shouldn't eat. These are all boundaries questions for ourselves. And I think the most important boundaries we can make are with ourselves. And um, let me make sure I'm sh I share this um, to my other page. Hold on a second. Um, make sure that... I get this out there. Wait, oh, are you kidding me? I am sitting here going live to an audience of zero, I bet you anything. Um, how do I figure out my privacy on this video? Hold on a second. <laughs> All right, let me fix this. I, I was like, nobody's here. Hmm, everybody's been watching my lives every day. It's on privacy only me, um, I think. And so that is why no one can see me right now. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Edit audience. Public. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome because you're just tuning in because I had this set to private audience all this time and I've been talking to myself for the last nine minutes. Um, Karen Keener, the Sovereign Mom, and um, maybe I'll be able to edit this later and before I post or anything. Um, I was talking about how I had such an exciting morning with my chickens until all of a sudden my body hit a point where it was just fatigued, exhausted, tired. It was just worn out. And so what I had done in the meanwhile is, hold on, let me, let me tag in since I have that fixed. Edit post. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can tag myself, my other self. <laughs> there we go. Done. All right, now y'all should be able to see my video and comment and, and join me. Hello. And let me go to here and accept the tag. Let's see here. Fixed. Oh, sorry. Yes. Perfect. That is exactly what I want. All right. All right. I am good. All right. So, welcome. We, it was a crazy day and my chickens got attacked, um, one of them, I'm not sure if she'll make it, yada, yada. And so I just hit a wall and I was so fatigued and I listened to my body and it said lay down and I did. And I woke up just in time to do this video, which I was gonna talk about body cues, which is listening to our body. And sometimes our body will tell us what to eat and what not to eat. It, a lot of times it will do that and that's a wonderful thing. And it will tell us um, when to sleep and when to get up and make action. And it will, it tells us a lot about what's going on in our lives. And one of the biggest body cues for me that um, experiences in my life that I want to share is that I had a person in my life that I had been dating for a time. And um, I, I, 
am a little psychic. I don't know what, it, what to call it, but I definitely had a little premonition that um, I I went to sleep one night. He was out. He had he was in um, graphic art design school, and he was out. And he was with me constantly. Like all of a sudden, this guy was like super enamored with me, and he came on really hot, really fast, and I was like. A little like, should you let yourself have feelings for this guy? Because he just seems to be a little too good to be true and too quick and everything. And finally, I let him in my life. And he was out at um, graphic art school. And he was going out with some other students after class. And had told me that's what he was doing for the evening. And I went to sleep that night. And I had this dream that he was with someone else at his brother's house or something and they were hooking up and I was like why didn't you just in my dream I said why didn't you just tell me so I could move on with my life instead of cheating on me why didn't you tell me you were interested in someone else so that I could have spared spared me the hurt of cheating on me instead of doing what you're doing or whatever and the next day I thought that's a weird dream because this guy is so into me. I just don't see him all of a sudden going from like 100 miles per hour to zero or reverse the next day. And as it turned out, <laughs> lo and behold, um, um, Chucklehead, I called him and said, I had this weird dream. You can't believe it. And he's like, are you a witch? And I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? He's like, how did you know? And I was like, how did I know? And he, he had gone to his brother's house with some other chick and he had fallen in love with her now. And so it was just moved on to the next person and he felt really bad. Yet again. And I was like a little in shock because I just didn't see it coming and kind of in a daze. And I, I just thought that there's no way that's true. Like, how could that be? You know? And over the next few days, it just was like this weird thing because I he told me how bad he felt and how much he didn't want to hurt me. And I believed him, you know, like I was like, this guy is just a clown. He's immature. He like I was stupid to fall for him. <laughs> But, you know, he wants to be my friend and everything, and he's just a, an idiot, you know? Like, I was dumb to fall for an idiot, you know? Like, I felt like I blamed myself a lot. And this is a little bit about what I was talking about yesterday. When you feel like you're more emotionally mature than someone, do you have the responsibility then to be more understanding of them and to not, you know, like, it's like, did I feel like uh, um, hurt or specifically like, did it feel personal to me? No, it felt like, man, he's a fool, you know? And so I carried on and then all of a sudden I was like walking out my apartment and there's like a little donut store across the street and I was like going to go over there and I wasn't really paying attention and I almost walked in front of a bus and I was like, holy cow, like I didn't want to die or any like where did this like total lack of awareness like I was in a bubble of like I couldn't feel anything and I was like something's not right and then by the end of that night my neck was out really bad like really really bad out neck out and it was to the point that I went to it was I went it was at the time of the Orange County Fair I went to Orange County Fairgrounds and I was with a friend and my neck was out and the Ferris wheel was going around, or the, yeah, Ferris wheel, not the merry-go-round, <laughs> Ferris, Ferris wheel, and I couldn't see the top of it without, like, bending back like this, because I could not move my neck at all, and I was like, what the heck is going on with my neck? Like, I don't know what I did. Did I sleep wrong? Like, why would my neck just go out? And the next day, doing a massage, my client, Lori, said, um... That that's a crazy thing that happened with you and Jeremy. I can say his name because he wouldn't mind me sharing this story. <laughs> we are not friends anymore, but we were friends for a long time and he likes personal growth, so he would appreciate this. Anyway, I, she was like, that's a crazy story about that guy because he seemed like he was just too much over the top about you. And then all of a sudden to be just like, 
here today, gone tomorrow kind of situation. And she goes, as far as your neck goes, do you remember what Louise Hay said? And Louise Hay wrote a book called You Can Heal Your Life, and it has things about the body. And I was like, yeah, she she talks about the neck and how the neck is about inflexibility, and it's about seeing all sides of the story, um, to see all the points of view around you. And, um, and I said, but I don't feel like um, to being able to see things from his perspective. Like, I can totally see things from his perspective. He's kind of childish and whatever, and I don't really blame him. Or, you know, I, I just, I don't see what, I, I'm not missing his perspective here. I get it. He's just kind of childish about it. I mean, he's older, but and he should know better, but, that, you know, what can you do? She goes, well, what about your point of view? Aren't you angry? Because if that happened to me, I would be super fucking pissed that some guy just like did that to me. And, and I was like, I did not let myself be angry. I didn't let myself feel anything. And my body decided to tell me <laughs> it was mad. <laughs> I kind of, there's something that very spiritual people do and very evolved people do, and it's called emotional bypassing. And it's where we kind of, or spiritual bypassing, where we see things from everyone else's point of view and we understand them and we have compassion for them and we forget ourselves. And in that, when I have done that, my body is quick to let me know, like, hmm, Karen. <laughs> you're ignoring your feelings, you're stuffing them. And I didn't think I was even stuffing my feelings, but it was funny because when I said, oh yeah, that is kind of a fucked up thing to do. That's like really fucked up. Like, hmm. And all I had to do was say that to myself. And honestly, like after, between the time Lori said that to me while I was doing massage on her with my neck out, and me considering my own feelings that I had neglected to say, stop and say, Karen, I care about you and you deserve better than this. This was fucked up and you don't deserve, you don't, you shouldn't feel like you have to rush to be his friend or accommodate his needs right now. You need to be with yourself and your own feelings. And it was at that exact moment, like it was just from that moment on, you know, of a not, 30 minutes, the neck pain was gone. Like, full rotation, look up, look down, no more blocked neck. Could see everything. I had all, I had my faculties back. And so I wanted to share that story because it's a really good way to understand that how you're, how important and imperative it is to pay attention to our body cues. Hi, Crystal. And to take into account how important listening to our body is. And so what I like, there's ways to do like visualizing and assess what your body's telling you. But the main thing to do when your body is telling you something and you are getting some cues from your body is to ask it like, what am I missing? Where am I invalidating you or maybe bypassing and maybe not listening to you? And then get a pencil, get your handy pencil and your paper and journal about it. Write it down and say, okay, I'm listening to you. What do you need from me right now? What do I need to do to make you feel better, body? <laughs> Is there a situation right now that is impacting my body and how could I do better and love it better and be more in tune to you body? And so I will write it down and so that my body con knows that I'm making a conscious effort to listen and to pay attention and to see if there's something where that disconnect happened, where we need to connect again and where... I need to show my body that I'm listening, I'm loving, I'm appreciating, and that I'm taking the time to acknowledge my feelings, all of my feelings, and not to um, over glaze over them, ignore them, because other people's feelings seem much more imperative and other people seem more sensitive. Other people often seem more 
n needy of my attention and care than I do because I just, I don't know what it is about myself. And this might be, you know, growing up with two narcissistic parents is part of it, the programming that I will tend to, <sighs> I, I feel like I'm an often an unconscious observer of what's going on. Like I'm the fly in the wall and I, I, I have a lot of out of body experiences where I'm like noticing things that are happening in my life, but I'm not like in the experiences that happen in my life. So I have to thank you Tuesday. <laughs> And I have to like listen to myself and I have to like go out of my way to pay attention to my own feelings because a lot of the times I'm more in my head than in my body. I'm a little bit autistic that way, a little left brain. And I'm thinking about things and I'm thinking about other people's point of views, but I'm not necessarily looking at my life and listening to myself and saying, what do I need? in this situation or where have I forgotten myself in this situation. I had another situation yesterday that I mentioned with a relative and that was kind of the same or similar situation where I hadn't realized that for months I had um, <clears throat> felt somehow I was responsible for this other person's feelings and I knew that that's how that person thought about it that like I was responsible and this person was behaving terribly vindictive to me in a way that is unconscionable <laughs> in most people's standards and I was thinking that because they know that I'm mature and whatever that I can handle it and I'm like, but that's not an excuse for their bad behavior. And I don't need to have that person in my life anymore. <laughs> and I really gave my permission to just say, you know what? You don't have to tolerate, Karen, talk to myself. You don't have to tolerate people being behaving that way towards you. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> just because people are hurtful or ignorant or stupid or less evolved, less aware of their own emotions or how they're taking their own pain and turning it outward onto you and you understand it doesn't have anything to do with you and you're not taking it personally, doesn't mean you have to sit there and be the whipping post and take the abuse. And we talked about that a little bit yesterday. And that is really something where your body, if you're not paying attention, your body can tell you, you can listen to your heart, you can feel your heart, like, why is this so hard to walk away from this person when this person pr basically pushing me away? But you can also have your body turn on you and, and your neck go out and go, okay, you're not listening to your point of view. You're not seeing at this, you know, like Louise Hay says, you're not seeing all this from all perspectives. And and then you're asking, well, whose perspective am I not seeing? Oh, yeah, my own. Fuck. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, me. I forgot me in all of this, you know? Where was I in this story, you know? I am actually, like, the victim here, and I didn't even know it. And I, I'm carrying on, like, I owe somebody else an apology because I've been gaslit my whole life by narcissists and I don't realize when other people are being complete fucking assholes to like go oh you don't have to tolerate that and I don't even often notice that they're being assholes I just see them acting out their own personal shit around me and I'm not realizing yeah they're really going out of their way to hurt me I don't need to be you know um, a part of their lives anymore if they are that vindictive and that fucked up in themselves. Um, so that being said, yes, hold people accountable for their own behavior in regards to you. Love and forgive them. You know, I like, I, I I'm forgive them for they know not what they do, but don't tolerate them because they don't know not what they do. <laughs> There's nowhere that says you have to like let them keep beating the fuck out of you because you, they don't know any better or something. You know, you don't have to stand there and, and do that. You shine and find other relationships. And yesterday I shared how to go do that. 
But listen to your body. The main thing today is listen to your body because your body is like, I know. And, and I think part of today, not just the adrenaline from my chickens being attacked and dealing with a guy where it was a direct confrontation, like, no, you cannot allow your dog to come over here anymore. I'm not usually telling people what to do, <laughs> you know? But I was had to be very direct and and I'm not even usually in those situations. It's very rare that I'm in a situation where I have to be directly confrontational with someone because it's not usually like defending my life or the life of my children or my property, my livestock, etc. So very different. <sighs> anyway, yes, life is good. And I listened to my body and I slept today when it was time. And that might be a little bit from yesterday too. My body might have just been like processing all of that relationship kind of coming to an end with that particular relative. And and it said sleep and I slept and I slept. I would have slept right through this call. <laughs> but my body just knew and it woke me up like, okay, 10 minutes to get on and talk about body cues. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm listening to my body and my body rewarded me by waking me up in time for this call and not letting me oversleep. It knew exactly when to do what it needed to do, which was perfect, right? I'm always appreciative of that. <laughs> I mean, your body, your body rewards you and says, this is important to you also. And I know that you get a lot of joy and love from doing this. So I'm going to wake you up instinctively just before this call is needs to happen, you know, and you need to talk to people about this. Anyway, I love you guys. I'm so glad to share my stories with you and I hope that they are, you know, useful to help you in listening to your body and making your own notes and having that kind of loving communication with yourself and your needs and enjoying them and appreciating them and appreciating yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much. I um, would love it if you guys have not subscribed to my Substack and you want to find out more about things that I'm talking about and sharing about. Um, I try to put all these videos and replays onto my Substack. And so I would love for you all to um, subscribe. I'm going to put a link to that right here. It's the sovereignmom.substack.com. And come join me there. There is a really good deal coming up. I'm going to do a really in-depth class about doing, so we're going to do some live exercises. You're going to have pen and paper. We're going to take notes. It's going to be a super fun class. And you are going to get a huge discount on that class if you are a, a Substack subscriber. Uh, uh, paying subscribe. I, there's an option for free, so you can subscribe right now for free to find out when it comes. But there's going to be a huge offer for paying subscribers to my Substack to do this course, and it's going to take you through. We're going to go through some really fun things. We're going to do some exercises where we do body scans and live like meditations and um, different types of practices of creating different things that help tools to help us. In creating better boundaries and stuff. So it's going to be really exciting. It's coming up soon, but I want you guys to be subscribed to my Substack so that you can hear about it when it comes out because this, this call is leading up to that moment where we're going to be jumping in and doing some real, like we're really going to play like in this, in this, we're going to play. We're going to get our pens and papers out. And we're really going to workshop it together. And I'm super excited to do this with you guys, um, this event. And, um, <clears throat> so if you want to hear about it, definitely jump in and subscribe. If, um, it is free to subscribe, but if you become a paid subscriber, um, at any amount, you're going to become, and, and it's really cheap to subscribe to my sub stack. It's like a monthly fee. You can cancel at any time. And even if you cancel, you're going to get this discount. So, um, even if you cancel after a month. So it's definitely going to be worth it to jump in and join and become a paying subscriber to my sub stack to stay abreast of what's coming next. And um, oop, there it is. There's the link for you to subscribe to my sub stack and keep on top of all of this and keep up with me. I am so grateful you guys are here with me every week. I am so grateful that you are 
um, participating and joining and I hope you're getting a lot out of this. It's been really fun for me to do this daily and to engage with everyone and it's just been a pleasure all around and it's been a big validation for me when everybody's like talking and engaging about doing this coaching with my life and that this is what I want to be doing with my life and that it's worth it. It's worthwhile for people and so it has been so validating for all of you to be here and to be sharing and to be engaging with me in this. So I appreciate all of you that I've been seeing popping in and talking and asking questions. Thank you so much. Oh, yes, exactly. Exactly that. Thank you. My heart definitely feels it. And it is definitely a huge affirmation and validation for me from you, from the universe, from everything. It's just like, thank you. Yes, more, please. <laughs> thank you more, please. <laughs> so I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday. It's Wednesday night. And you're doing some fun things tonight with your family. Last night I went way over. I want to cut, keep it, keep it short and sweet tonight. And um, if you just jumped on at the end, please like hop in and watch from the beginning. Um, <laughs> I did had a false start because my I didn't realize my uh, video settings were on only me or private or something because I had saved something for myself earlier that I shared to my page for only me and. <laughs> And now all my settings are screwed up. So anyway, I love you guys and hop in and check it out. Probably start at the nine minute mark and you'll get to see what this is all about and hopefully get something out of it. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. More please. Have a lovely night and I hope you have loving, harmonious and joyful and beautiful, supportive and enduring relationships as a result of you following some of these tips or just in general. I hope, I hope and wish that for all of you. Have a lovely night. Thank you.